Welcome to my lecture online. Next, we're going to take a look at see what it takes to have a pump in place that actually pumps the water from a lower reservoir to a higher reservoir. Notice at the low reservoir, the pressure is going to be equal to atmospheric pressure because it's open in the atmosphere. We're starting with velocity equal to zero and height equal to zero because we're going to call that a reference height. On the higher reservoir, we're going to have a velocity of the water coming out of the pipe. We're going to have a height H2 to where the water needs to be pumped and P2 is also going to be open to the atmosphere. If we eliminate atmospheric pressure, we can then claim that P1 and P2 are equal to zero because we're going to take therefore just the, uh, instead of the uh, total pressure, we're going to take the gauge pressure instead. But now notice our equation has changed just a little bit. We've now included the pressure term from the pump on the left side equation since the pump adds energy to the system. So when we put all the knowns in there, P1 will be zero, V1 will be zero, H1 will be zero, and P2 will be zero. So therefore we now have an equation for the pressure of the pump is going to be equal to the one half rho V2 squared. So that's equal to the kinetic energy that it needs to be given to the water. It's going to equal rho plus rho GH2, which is the potential energy that's given to the water. And finally, the energy required, the work required to overcome the frictional force the friction head loss times the density times G. That's an additional amount of work that needs to be done to overcome the friction as well. So notice there's three terms the pump needs to deal with, giving the, the fluid velocity, giving it height, and overcoming the friction. And that will then be the, the equation needed to calculate the pressure that needs to be provided by the pump. And that is how it's done.